Uh, okay, so uh, how do you draw a slope field? How would you do this? So what you do is you uh, simply make a table where you put x in one column, dy or dx in the second column, and you choose some um, x values. So like in this case here, so this is x equals zero, by the way. That's gonna be x equals pi over two. This will be pi, three pi over two, and two pi. Of course, this will be negative pi over two, negative pi, negative three pi over two. <laughs> Hardest to write it in a negative two pi. So what you would do is you'd say, okay, at x equals zero, what's the value of the derivative? What's well, zero? Likewise at pi, two pi, negative pi, negative two pi. So what's going to happen is that at x equals zero, my slope is always zero. So you draw these little dashes like this. And I'm drawing them as horizontal dashes because that's the slope of zero. Likewise, at pi, or should I negative pi and pi, and two pi, and negative two pi. So again, all these dashes have a slope of zero, right? That I'm drawing. That's because dy of dx is zero at those x values. The y value won't matter because dy of dx equals negative sine x. Now, pi over two, I know that if I plug in, if I do negative sine pi over two, sine pi over two is one, but it's negative, so it's negative one. Three pi over two, if I do negative sine three pi over two, sine three pi over two is negative one, but negative makes a positive one. Negative pi over two is coterminal with three pi over two, so that's still a positive one. Negative three pi over two is coterminal with pi over two, so that's negative one. So what you do is now you draw these slopes, or these dashes that have a slope of one like this. And likewise that, I'm, oh, yikes. It's supposed to be negative one, my bad. I pirate two, so I'm supposed to do like this. My apologies. And also at um, negative three pirate two. Then I draw them as one at negative pi over two and three pi over two. And so that's a slope field. And then, for example, say I wanted to graph um, y equals, so you know, dy or dx equals this. Let's say y equals cosine x. Uh, plus one, then I could do that real easily. Um, so that would show me cosine x plus one. Or if I just want cosine x, cosine x would be like this. So ultimately, it, it, will, it follows the contours of our um, graphical solution we did in the calculator. We graph cosine x plus c, but we did plus l1, we did a list. So a slope field is just another way of um, graphing the solution through differential equation um, if you didn't know how to find antiderivative of it. But we do know how to find antiderivative of negative sine x. We know it's cosine x plus c. And the, all these little dashes, they follow basically, they're like tangent lines, right? These little tangent lines for the curve. And they kind of follow the contours of your solution to the differential equation. Um, no worries. Uh, welcome to class. So um, to summarize, and then we'll do some more practice. So uh, someone's, so someone's like, okay, and it's always good to ask, why are we doing this? <laughs> You're doing this to actually get a graphical representation of your of your the solution to your differential equation. That's what, and that's why I put in the text box, right? I put in the text box for a good reason, but maybe you missed it. Um, it's a find the graphical solution or to graphically represent the solution to your differential equation. So this is your differential equation of sine x. I knew the solution that was cosine x plus c, and I just wanted to represent it graphically. That's what a slope field's for. And when you draw a slope field, you're trying to see where the slopes are positive and negative. 
uh, let's let's try another one. It, it should sink in. Once you see it two or three, uh, second or third time, it, it tends to sink in. Um, let's look at this one here. Um, and by the way, this says we can even use our slow field sketch a particular solution. So what I did, I actually erased it already. I should, let me see if I can undo my work. So if I wanted to find a solution at pi over two common negative two, let me keep on doing my work. So pi over two common negative two, that's going to be um, right down here. So the particular solution for that will look like this. So the whole point of slope field is to help represent um, the graphical solution or to graphically represent the solution to your differential equation. Remember, differential equations are when you take the antiderivative, right? So y equals cosine x plus c. And duh, I know how to graph that. We've done cosine so many times, but you know, what if you couldn't find the antiderivative as easily, but you still wanted to understand the graph of how it looked? That's why we do slope fields. That's the purpose. Um, so let's construct a slope field for um, dy dx equals x. So first off, I know that y is going to equal x squared over 2 plus c. I know that. So I'm expecting something that's parabolic. But um, what we're going to do instead, I'll do this uh, as a little table here, is I'm going to deliberately choose uh, these x values, just because I see them in my graph here. And I'm going to calculate the derivative at each of those x values. So what's the derivative at negative 3? Negative 3. In fact, actually, they're all going to be identical because dy over dx equals x. So what you're going to do now is at negative three, you're going to draw very steep, very, very steep dashes like this to have a slope of negative three. And then they get less steep at negative two. Still pretty steep, but a little less steep. It's kind of relative, um, depending on how steep you made for the previous one. Then I'm going to do negative one, so not as steep. Then zero. That one's going to be positive. Then I'm going to make it a little more positive. Okay. And if you want to graph the solution that passes through zero negative two is right here. You basically use those dashes to kind of guide your graph. And if you think about it, that kind of makes sense, right? I mean, it should be parabolic, right? Um, so that's what's happening there. And um, hold on one sec. Let me get myself out of this. back to my fill out notes, make sure I didn't miss anything here. Yeah, so the key idea, let me type in, in the text box. What's the key idea here? Uh, the slope of the solution passing through x and y is given by the x coordinate. That's kind of the key idea here. The slope of the solution. So remember, our solution to a different equation is x squared over 2, and the derivative is a slope, right? That's the other thing, too, in case you're forgetting. The derivative is a slope, right? We've done that for, from day one. Well, not day one, but right in the fall semester. It is a slope of your original equation, or the slope of the tangent lines. And so you're using the derivative to graph. So it's basically a, a bunch of slope. Uh, of slopes of tangent lines. That's why I call a slope field. That's why it's called that. It's just a bunch of slopes of the tangent line. That's what a slope field is. Um, and it just en enables you to graph this. So this right here, the slope field
is the graph of this. Remember, it's a graph of the solution to the differential equation. The slope of the solution passing through x, y. Let's try this again. So example nine. The or dx equals negative x or y. So this is this one's gonna be a doozy. Um, what we're going to do, uh, because you have two variables <laughs> to consider, um, let's just plug in y equals three, y equals two, y equals one, all these right here. And notice how y equals three is right here, right? Y equals two is right there. This, that was kind of done deliberately. Y equals one's right there. Y equals zero is right there. And so, so then of course that's negative x over three. Negative x over two. Negative x. Uh, y equals zero is undefined, by the way. Can't divide by zero. Remember, plug into here. Uh, y equals one is negative x again. Sorry, y equals negative one is positive x. To divide by negative one. X over two, x over three. Then you kind of look at each one, each point individually. So for example, this dot right here is at negative three comma three. So if I were to um, plug in negative three for x, you get negative negative three or three or three or one. So you just graph one. What if I plug in negative three up here? I get three over two, so it comes a little more steep. Uh, or here it becomes closer to one. Actually, let me draw that a little bit better. I'm sorry. Um, hold on a sec. I'm, I'm, I'm losing my mind. Give me one sec here. We're only we're only focused on the first row. My bad. We're only focused on the first one. X is sorry. When y is three, so when y is three, and you have negative three comma three, the slope is one. Okay, I was right about that. Now, if I plug in negative two, I do negative negative two over three. That's two thirds. So not as steep. And if I plug in negative one for x when y is three, I get negative negative one. I get one third. It's also not as steep. And that's undefined um, here, so you don't really do anything about that. Um, if I plug in um, oh, actually, I take it back. It's zero here at x equals zero. Sorry. If you plug in x equals zero, it's zero. If you plug in x equals one, you get negative one third. If you plug in x equals two, you get negative two thirds. If you plug in x equals three, you get negative one. And you sort, of, you sort of just keep generating this graph one by one. I know it's kind of a pain, but what you could do is just you know, recognize the fact that, okay, I'm plugging in you know, negative three to three for x in each of these rows here. I know it's going to be zero in each of these cases because x is zero. When x is one, I'm doing negative one half. It was negative one third before. Then negative one, then it's undefined, so you do a vertical line. And then, of course, um, that will be um, negative one, so now it's negative negative one half, or oh, sorry, um, you plug in one, one half, and one third. Um, over here, if I plug in two, I get negative two thirds, and negative one, and undefined. Or should I, it's actually more like negative two over here. Um, and then of course, if I plug in two, I get two, one, and two thirds. So you start seeing this is actually starting to form a circle. Um, if I kind of do over the other side here, like for example, if I plug in negative one, that's one third. Sorry, one half here. Negative one, I get one, then undefined. Again, I'm playing negative one, so that's negative one, negative one half. Negative one third. Uh, if I plug in negative two, 
into here, that's negative negative two has positive one, then negative two, and it kind of does this. So we kind of see what's happening is it's actually forming a circle. That's what's happening here. Um, and I'm not sure what's meant by um, this FX notation thing, but um, if you do sketch a particular solution to this, um, you could actually solve this, but we're not going to do that just yet. Uh, we'll save that for next week to actually solve this differential equation. Um, but if you want to sketch a particular solution through one comma one, it'd be kind of like this. So you kind of follow the slow fields to do that. Let's do this one more time. Actually, this is identifying slow fields. Um, let's come back, let's take a break right now. I think right now is a good time to take a break. <laughs> uh, let's just uh, do a 10 minute break, come back around 10, 27, 10, 28. I'll talk about this right here, and then I'll have you guys try a worksheet. And then the seven two notes, let me do a video on that. Um, I'll do probably a little bit longer video on that. And then um, we'll do a lesson on that tomorrow. Um, but anyway, um, we'll, we'll take a break right now. We'll come back and talk more about slow fields. And then I'll give you guys a worksheet too, because I think you guys need to see a worksheet on it. So let's take a break right now. I'll stop the recording. 